when will saturn spare me finally how many days months years decades i am suffering so badly in area of my health marriage relationships child birth career finance name fame everything i am just suffering but it seems there is no relief <laughs> will this be throughout the rest of my life will i have to live like this till the last moment till my last breath or is there any scope for improvement in this area these are the questions which i keep getting most of the times from youtube so therefore today's topic is when will saturn finally spare me <laughs> he wants to spare you um, well let's first understand what saturn represents saturn in one word represents the material world that's it end of the story <laughs> one word one word for saturn material world it's two actually but it's still one material world <laughs> why because the material world as krishna says in the gita is a place of suffering dukhalam ashashvatam why because in this material world everybody has their own centers i have my center my center says oh make videos in youtube have a job here in germany stay here do this do that your center maybe you may be living in mumbai you have your own center you may be, some of you may be living in kolkata another person may be living in washington dc another person may be in london another person may be in some village another person may be in some island and chilling <laughs> wherever you are whoever you are you always have a center and that center what is that center actually that center is the sun now you understand why leo and aquarius are opposite so when you are having your own center so it's like when you have the sun then opposite is aquarius which is you see the circles of everybody else yes that is why aquarius is the 11th house it is the uh, sign of other people so there are like so many circles so these circles are all intersecting with each other and that is why there is conflict that is why there is selfishness in this world but if you uh, read the vedic scriptures uh, especially shrimad bhagavatam where there is a description of the vaikuntha planets then there there is only one center what is that who is that yes lord narayana lord vishnu hari is the only center there and he is like this one center all other circles are concentric circles which means they have the same center but they are going on and on and on and uh, let's take lord ram's case for example you know so ayodhya which is eternally existing in the spiritual world not that ayodhya exists here in uttar pradesh india no yes it exists here but it eternally exists uh, in vaikuntha ayodhya is even at a higher rasa than vaikuntha because lord ram has very intimate relationships with devotees uh, especially like hanuman or like all the other devotees uh, which we know from the ramayana so therefore there there is only one center and there are no uh, circles which intersect with each other so therefore there is no conflict what does it mean there is one center it means that everybody in the spiritual world is only concerned about how to serve god that is why there is no self centric belief there is no conception of selfishness there because everybody is rooted to one goal but the problem in this material world is when we come leaving god there we think that we will be happy when we have our own centers and that is where suffering comes what is shani actually what is saturn saturn represents the three houses he is the karaka for the sixth house what is the sixth house sixth house is the house of competition 
Manashashthani Indriyani Prakriti Sthani Karshati. This is what Krishna says in the Gita. Karshati, which means the living entity is foaming in the mouth, working like donkeys, worse than donkeys sometimes. Have you seen people working? 18 hours a day I have seen people working sometimes. May not be in the office, but then in family and then commuting from job to home and all. So they leave home at 6 and they reach at 12, my God, in the night. How pathetic that lifestyle is. There are people who work 20 hours and they rarely get 2-3 hours of sleep. Sometimes people don't even get 2 hours, I've seen. So that is what Bhagavad Gita explains. So that is what Shani is. Mana Shashthani Indriyani Prakriti Sthani Karshati. Indriya means to satisfy the desires of the senses. The eyes want to see something beautiful. The nose wants to smell something good. The ears want to hear something good. The tongue wants to taste something good. So that is the sixth house. Hmm? Running. Sixth house is race. <laughs> And sixth house is a very difficult house. Why? Because uh, you also have Mars as the Karak. So sixth house gives you competition, friction, Saturn, Mars together. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> then you have the eighth house. What is eighth house? Eighth house in one word, it is depression. That's all. Sixth house, one word, competition. Competition doesn't mean you have some competition in your uh, uh, career. Not necessarily. It can mean anything. You are competing with your uh, siblings. It can mean you are competing. Whichever house links with the sixth house, you compete there. So suppose the sixth house and third house are linked. Then you might have faced too much competition uh, in social media. You might try to grow in social media, but then uh, some other person may come and overtake you. I'm just giving an example. And you may not do that out of profession. You may just do that out of your free will. Okay, uh, free will in the sense uh, uh, out of your passion, but then somebody will overtake you there. Okay, if if the sixth house is not good or if the overall horoscope is not good, so then you have the eighth house. Eighth house, one word: depression. Depression means in insecurity, uncertainty. Uh, recently, I had made a video about uh, you know, Scorpio or eighth house. In that, I said. All the words which are like un, in, um, un. <laughs> like we have security, we have insecurity, okay? We have stability, we have instability, okay? So all these, you know, in, un, un, um, all this comes from the eighth house actually. They, their origin is the eighth house. So Shani is also the significator of the eighth house, okay? So eighth house represents those things which can end up giving you depression. Which can what depression is what basically depression is uh, insecurity basically you are feeling you are constantly under under threat basically because second house is the house of stability and uh, second house also shows uh, confidence it shows upbringing uh, family upbringing okay so if the if the family upbringing is not good that then uh, it is very likely that if life uh, becomes very difficult later on you may get into depression much easier much easily then compared to a person who has had a very stable upbringing okay? because second house is the house where you get an eighth house is the house where you uh, feel you have not got anything that is why when somebody is a child uh, first five years it is said that you should always give the child okay just give 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 so that when that child grows up, he or she learns how to give others. So one who has not received love, it is very difficult to give love because you cannot give something which you don't have right. Or you may receive love from some other place, from your spouse or your friends or not necessarily family members, but somebody has to be there to give you love. And this is not some entitlement that, oh, I have not got love, how can I give love? But uh, this is from our side. If we are parents, we should take care. If we are siblings, then we should take care. We give love to whoever or our friends. Okay, Because if we do not give them love, they cannot give it to others. Okay, So, and then uh, eighth house is also the house of death. It is the house of sadness, moroseness, and all these things. Insecurity. And then you have the twelfth house. What is twelfth house? Twelfth house is... Mm -hmm. 12th house the house of loss all right anything that you lose even after working actually okay and saturn is also linked to the 10th house he is the um, 
Atmakaraka for the Dasamsa chart, which shows you have to really work in this world if you want to uh, uh, leave a mark, all right? So, but primarily he is the Karaka for the 6th, 8th and 12th. And wherever these houses are linked with, so uh, if the 6th house is linked with the 10th house, then they can give, it can give too much stress when it comes to career, okay? In the sixth house is linked with the second, whereas sixth house is like stress and competition, right? And wherever the eighth house is, it can give you depression that way. Like uh, you will, see, I have seen many charts. Wherever the third and the eighth they are linked, uh, they are all always into social media, and this this is what ends up giving them depression. If the lagna is involved, then it can be health, all right? Fifth house then affairs. These these are the things. So tenth house then career issues, all right? So. And 12th house, as you all know, loss. Whatever associates with the 12th house or wherever 12th house lord goes, there can be loss. So, so uh, wherever, what Shani is in, in short, Shani is these three houses basically. It doesn't matter where he's sitting. He's always there in your horoscope. It doesn't matter he's exalted, debilitated or what. So therefore, you have to understand that till the time you do not get rid of this conception of my own center shani won't stop troubling you mm -hmm. actually shani doesn't trouble people say that shani is troubling me shani. shani never troubles saturn doesn't trouble anybody it is our own desires which trouble us all right we just brand it on some planet like saturn or rahu never 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 so therefore saturn see you you if you want to uh, see your saturn if you want to improve your saturn just improve these three houses okay Sixth house, become disciplined in life. Then, then Shani will spare you because discipline means you are you are doing what you should do. That is self-discipline. Yes, student has to study. A person, if you are an employee, you should work. If you are a leader, then you should take care of your subordinates. You should give a vision to the people. And then eighth house. Eighth house is insecurity. Don't do things that make you more insecure. Otherwise, you will feel the wrath of Saturn more. If you are sitting uh, with those people who are gossiping, gossip is what? Gossip is the eighth house. Why? Because uh, gossip is like uh, feeding on somebody's uh, shortcomings. Okay. So then karma backfires because whoever gossips with you regarding somebody will also gossip about you to somebody else okay so if you uh, if you keep gossiping and then if you uh, keep doing uh, an eighth house is adharma okay because it is 12th from the ninth it is loss of dharma adharma that word comes from uh, the eighth house it is the core house of adharma okay so there are primarily four activities uh, which Srimad Bhagavata mentioned so primarily it is first one is no meat eating. If you are killing animals, then, uh, or if you are taking part in killing and eating them, meat, fish, and eggs, then you will have horrible suffering in uh, some point of your life. All right, may not be in this life, maybe next life, or even in this life. That karma will take care. Uh, all right. Then it is intoxication. Intoxication is uh, ruining your own body and your mind. Okay. Then you have gambling. Gambling in increases the propensity to cheat. And then there is illicit sex. You know, sex uh, outside of marriage, before marriage, premarital sex. All these comes under illicit sex. So in Kali Yuga, you see these four activities are rampant. And that is why people are literally in hell. You see what's happening in this world. Okay? And I'm not talking of coronavirus here. Even, even before corona, you, you, just, you just see this mayhem all, everywhere. So... You see the news, you know, it's all bomb blast, killing, murder, this happened, that happened, ye ho gaya, wo ho gaya, my God. All, all the negativity of the world is there. So therefore, and 12th house, reduce your expenses, control your standard of living. If you're, uh, see, this is how Saturn tricks you actually. He plays a beautiful game. What he does is he, give you, he gives you some allurements, okay. So suppose you are in India and you are earning 1 lakh rupees per month, okay, salary, 12 lakhs per annum. Then uh, maybe you uh, get the sum of 10th house or 11th house, okay? Then suddenly, boom, from 10 it becomes, 12 it becomes 18. Then you earn one and a half lakhs per month, okay? Before taxes, of course. And then suddenly you get another package, it becomes, you know, 30 lakhs. Wow, I am in the heavens. You know, I am 30 and I am earning 30. <laughs> and then what happens? You 
as a uh, foolish uh, person you increase your standard of living okay from uh, nokia you will go to samsung then you will go to iphone okay then you will keep raising your standard of living you will rise rise, 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 rise and then bang, one day you lose your job then what happens oh my god because now you cannot now because you have uh, you have gone to such high standards of living you cannot uh, behave like uh, ordinary person ordinary person i don't mean like beggars but normal you cannot behave normal because you cannot use a normal mobile phone because you are used to iphones you are used to you know uh, all, all the costly restaurants i have seen people like now uh, when i had started working in india uh, in uh, bangalore that time i had seen that my friends they used to uh, they used to eat you know all this uh, some this vada sambar or some pani puri some dosa something like this for dinner or for breakfast you know which was very cheap like you know 20 rupees 30 rupees those days not not much expensive but now when i go to india when i see them when i meet them they are eating in three stars you know one meal like 500 2000 uh, like uh, i mean it's very expensive so so this shows they have increased their standard of living by how many times minimum 10 to 20 times they have increased it and they are ordering food from all this you know online apps you know one one meal is like you know 200 300 400 that same thing which they can cook in home by you know maybe 50 rupees 100 rupees but they are spending 500 rupees for that you know just because they are lazy and they don't want to do that okay and they want to taste good food so they are addicted to all this uh, crappy stuff actually and this is with everybody so if your standard of living goes very high then when when difficult times come you will not be able to sustain you you will get into depression again okay because then you will see oh how pathetic i am but if you do not increase your standard of life to such an extent now if you have got some promotion you got more money your business has flourished you can of course improve your standard of living to some extent okay but uh, it should not happen the way people do it these days so your you, you your standard of living should rise in such a way that even if tomorrow you lose that job and you fall back to your current job then also you should be able to uh, not get into anxiety and depression at least okay because otherwise you will be very miserable so if you increase your standard of living every time like this the way people do these days then you will suffer more because life will never be a bed of roses it's a bed of thorns so today you may be doing great in your career but tomorrow you may be fired you your business may go down you you may lose your job or whatever anything can happen or some competitor may come and overthrow you somebody may just uh, put some court case against you who knows anybody can do anything so therefore you should control uh, you should not increase your standard of living you may earn in millions the problem is not in earning the problem is in savings you see because ultimately if you are earning in millions but you are not saving then it's useless right so therefore you have to check these three houses and what is the easiest and the most simplest way to do this actually it is by becoming more and more spiritual why because if you see all these three houses uh, they uh, they they only trouble you if you are overly materialistic okay so now let's take the example of competition now healthy competition is good i am not saying it is bad but most of the times people go into this you know and and the jealousy pulling pulling down each other you know hatred gossip and all this these are all things of the sixth house trying to prove others showing trying to show others oh look look i am better than you i am more intelligent i am more handsome i am more beautiful than you i am more smart than you i have more followers i am this i am that you know so this is all sixth house actually and this gets even to eighth house which is depression because even if you uh, exceed somebody by being envious or jealous you are still miserable because they say uh, revenge is like a hot coal which uh, may not burn the one who you throw uh, it on but it will definitely burn your own hands okay so if you realize that uh, you are ultimately beautiful your spirit soul krishna says in gita that um, every living entity is a spirit soul okay so then you will realize that i am much more beyond all these material things 
beyond my Instagram followers, my YouTube subscribers, my bank balance. I'm much beyond my relationships. I, I'm part of something very divine. Then the sixth house cannot trouble you. It will still trouble because of your bad karmas. But it won't trouble you to the extent it troubles you now. Your obsession will reduce with material stuff. And then the eighth house, you will find shelter. Manas ji had come to my channel and he said, ninth house, what is that one word for ninth house? It is shelter. People commit suicide and depression. they are in depression. Why? Because they don't feel sheltered. They feel hopeless. They feel there's nobody for me in this world. So when you read the Bhagavad Gita, then you will realize what is ninth house. Krishna says, I will give you shelter. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, na, yeah, the, uh, he says, uh, surrender unto me, don't fear. All right. Uh, he says, Ma Suchaha. He says at the end, the very famous shloka there. Okay. So, so in that shloka, he says, I will give you freedom from all suffering. Do not fear. So when fear is the eighth house. All right. So if you take shelter of Krishna, then you go to the ninth house. Then the eighth house cannot trouble you anymore. The moment you forget Krishna, the, that is the moment you are fearful. Forgetting Krishna means coming to 8th house, which is the house of fear and insecurity, darkness, right? And when your lifestyle is sattvic, you will by default have less expenses. You will save more money. And if you save more money, you will feel, okay, I am happy with this job. I don't have to you know, double my salary unnecessarily. Uh, just, just to prove or to just, just to do show off, you know, just to uh, increase my lifestyle. I don't need to do that because uh, I eat very simple food. You will feel, uh, you will feel that you can uh, be like a normal person. You don't have to, um, even if you are earning in millions or you are earning in billions, but you will have simple lifestyle. So then your mind will be peaceful. You will get good sleep, which is the twelfth house. All right. So the only remedy for Saturn, it is not fasting on Saturdays. It is not doing uh, shani mantras it won't help you all right it, it doesn't trust me it doesn't it, it's not very nilam it won't help you uh, it is not uh, donating to beggars donating to cow or crows no none of this all these remedies are useless unless you do this if you make spiritual life your first priority and then you do all this then it shall help okay Otherwise, I know so many people. They've been donating to Shani Mandir from eternal, like 20 years and they are still suffering. So you cannot cheat Saturn like this. Uh, Saturn is, Shani Maharaj is a person. He knows your ins and outs. All right. So don't, don't try to cheat him. You, you, you try to understand why, why at all I am trapped. Shani is the material world. When you say I have, I have got out of Shani, uh, you are essentially saying I am getting. I have got out of the material world. So do you know what that that means? You have gone beyond this. You know, earth, water, air, fire, ether, then mind, intelligence, false ego, one buddhi ahankar, all these eight coverings which the Shrimad Bhagavatam mentions. You have gone beyond it. So you have gone beyond Saturn means yours. You 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 have given up your center actually, which means you have stopped thinking that you are the enjoyer, controller, and proprietor. Because Krishna says in Gita, na, Bhukta nam yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram suridam sarva bhutanam gyatva maam shantim luchati. Yes, he says, I am the enjoyer, controller and proprietor. And one who understands this is shantim luchati. He gets shanti actually. All right. So do more spiritual activities. Include spiritual practices in your uh, daily schedule in the morning. Now read the Vishnu Sahasranam, read the Bhagavad Gita, chant mantras. For Shani, you can always chant Om Namo Narayana. It's a very beautiful mantra. Right? 108 times in Amala, you can always chant. Keep connection with Krishna through your Guru. Not just whimsically, Oh Krishna, I am yours. Krishna, I am yours. Not all this nonsense. All right? Associate yourself with a spiritual community. Have support of your Guru and your God brothers and your God sisters. And... Um, Reduce your, control your standard of living. Do not jump so high that when you fall, your bones break. <laughs> All right. So when you do this and you have a balanced lifestyle and then uh, otherwise Shani is also, as I forgot to say, 6,000 is also disease, right? So needless to say what is happening now. See, from where all this is happening, we all know, right? Why this has happened. So 
Therefore, if we become more spiritual and we become more enlightened, then we will realize that I am much beyond all these things. Okay? Then you will realize that, yes, even if my standard of living goes down, it's still fine. After all, I am a spirit soul. I am not this body. I am not a body living in this apartment using this mobile. You know, I am spirit soul. I am uh, divine. I am Satchit Ananda. I don't have to uh, worry about all this beyond a certain extent. Right? But always remember, this is the material world. How much ever you are spiritual, how much ever you are enlightened, there will always be some suffering or the other. All right? Which will come because of your past sinful activities. That is fine. That we have to accept. We cannot evade that. All right. But we should not create further distress for ourselves by doing all this nonsense. All right. That will be all from my side. And if you want to watch other videos of Saturn, I'll put it here. And if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me, you can always go to my website down in the description section. All right. And yes. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him.